What's going on, guys? Welcome to Two Dudes, One Car. I'm Parker Nierenstein. That's Alejandro. And I've got some questions for you. Let, oh, hit me. Yeah. So hit me. this is a topic that's debated a lot. And it's really hard to find a definite answer. But I, I feel like we can talk through it. And then I want you guys to participate in the comments on this. But I'm curious in your eyes, and then I'll, I'll talk about my opinion as well. What makes a supercar? And then what makes a hypercar? And, I, and also, keeping in mind how it's changed, perhaps, in the last 20 years. Okay. Because it was really clear when the only cars were like the McLaren F1 and the Veyron. Yeah. But now there's so much stuff. It's, it's a little bit more... I, it's more difficult. So, I'll, I'll say this. I think it's way easier than people make it out to be. Okay. I think there's a lot of marketing that plays into this that makes it really stupid. Because mm -hmm. there's even a category now, this is a mega car. Yeah. I'm I think sure you've heard that oh, before. I, mean, I think only Koenigsegg participates the, in that. The mega though. car. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Why not? Why not give yourself just a different category from everyone else? Well, yeah, because if no? you're the only one in the category, you win by default. We, we don't compete with anyone. What a crazy thing. We're just in the mega car category. But I do get what they were saying. It was one megawatt of power. Well, I understand. And it... Well, I understand that. Yeah. I want to put like simple rules that sure. we Please. all need to have. This is like the seatbelt of the car world. We all need to use it okay. for our safety so that we don't lose track of what's going on. Well, this is going to piss injured. a lot of people off. Let's okay. go. I don't think so. Okay. I actually don't Give me think the so. seatbelt definition. I think it's rather simple. Okay. I think a, a supercar, mm -hmm. it's anything that's sporty two doors uh two doors obviously a, a coupe style car that's really fast and special and that people want to own and aspire to own okay and that covers a massive amount of cars i want to say 99 percent of like really special cars mm -hmm. from a corvette which i'll consider it it's uh, a super car really like, which corvette is a c8 the stingray is that a the craziest one no i could but, so that's what's interesting right now the z06 is the craziest one but when the zr1 comes out it's not the craziest one it, uh, but around like perf like great performance when you're comp whatever whatever uh, let's put a you know what i like this Let's put a uh, uh, an actual goal of like what can compete here. Okay. Anything that can do better or around the basic Ferrari. Yeah. That's fast. That'll be a supercar. I agree. I feel like it's the the GT3 RS is is the is the start of the supercar. Yes. The Huracan, the yes. R8. Yes. That's yes. that's the entry level. 100%. I I've always thought the GTR wasn't a supercar. No, Even no, no. though no. it could compete with those cars back then. I think the aspiration part is big. Although the GTR has this big you know community behind it where a lot of people do aspire to own but a Those GTR. guys are nerds. And they, we can't, we can't give him that much respect and attention. No, I don't know. but it's not, no. it's not a I, Ferrari. It's a good value for money, which is, I'll say something you, controversial. I don't know if the Z06 is a supercar. I'll say this. Okay. I'll say, I used to categorize the Z06 as a sports car. Yeah, I think that, it is. I used to. Um, uh, and I think you can separate it and you can be as anal as you want about those little uh, areas. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this. I think acceleration-wise, you need to accomplish whatever the slowest Ferrari can accomplish mm -hmm. to be in that category. Or around that number by, mm -hmm. like, very close. Which it can. And it's faster than the slowest Ferrari around you the track. You need to be more expensive than the average... Uh, uh, than the average of whatever car that you're selling. So if you're a Corvette, for example, I need not to, I need it not to be the cheapest because it's not the fastest either. Mm -hmm. I need it to be the certain amount of acceleration combination with the next test, which I would say women have to look at it and say, that is a supercar. Because a I, woman, I, I don't disagree with that. Because a yeah. woman, and, 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 and this is not, sexist or anything no no super, it's, it's, it's super sexist but this is not just regular <laughs> sexist uh 
I think someone that really has no knowledge of whatever of these cars, uh -huh. he's going to look at it and say like, wow. Exactly. Yes. That. I agree. Is appealing. Right? Like just as 100%. That. Yeah. So I think that that's appealing and that sexy needs to be the other part of it. Right? Because otherwise a GTR, a GTR is just too normal looking. And I know all the stuff that he can do and all that. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. And the same thing with the C8, with the regular C8. Like who gives a crap? It's just a Corvette. And my wife, uh, God bless her. When she sees someone with a Corvette every single time, it's like my guy that doesn't have anything is trying too hard, right? So there, there are preconceptions to, to all these well, things. Yeah, I, this is where I get stuck with the Z06 is that, okay, so for a while the values were crazy. They're inflated. They're coming way down now. It still has the stigma of being the poor man's Ferrari, right? Would you agree with and that? And it is, yeah. So if it is that, then how can it be a supercar if it's the poor man's version be of a supercar? Because it doesn't matter, dude. You can be a low-brow superhero. If you have superpowers, you're a superhero. That's fair. Does that make sense? That's fair. That's that's the way I look at it. Like, But wouldn't you say the GTR is similar to that? It's got the superpowers. No, because but the, the GTR fails in the women department. Like a woman looks at a GTR and doesn't go like, oh my God, please play with my kitty. A woman looks at a GTR and he goes, what are they delivering in? Like, what are, what are they bringing? Is this my, my Uber Eats? Is this my DoorDash? What is it? Yeah. Let's just yeah, say, so, obviously, let, let's obviously. just say it, on average. I think better than that is just a non-car person. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I use the girl example because it's a simpler mindset to understand as a whole um whatever you can say that i'm being sexist and whatever i'm just using a really just simple cancel him, not me. example just yeah that's fine. <laughs> that's fine that's fine but that's a really simple example like there's no way belen's looking at a gtr and going like babe you should get one of those you know what that. I mean? Like your yeah. girl, I don't, I don't think your girlfriend's looking at that. Like average people. That She's don't not, but I do cars. know girls that are obsessed with GTRs. But, so it, but they like cars and they and like, GTRs. Specifically. But, but, but do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. There's GTR Wendy, who's a legend in the comments right here. GTR Wendy fucking loves GTRs. Damn, I'm I haven't saying, seen GTR Wendy. It doesn't apply. I hope to, you're here. It doesn't apply to everyone. Yeah. But it does apply to uh, a, a great majority of these sure. people. So I think it's harder to define supercar than hypercar. Because yes, it is. I agree. Uh, so you got to have the looks. Mm -hmm. You got to have the Ferrari like standard of speed. And uh, uh, you got to have the aspirational yeah, I think element it, it has, from everyone. It has to have an it. element of unaffordability. Yes. Yes. You know, like. It, but even it, if it's the entry one, there's always going to be the cheapest entry of it. Does yeah, that make sense? Of course. So that's where I give the Corvettes a pass. And not the C8, but like the the more special. The interesting ones. thing is that a lot of these supercars don't have a pedestrian version of them. Like there's no average Joe Ferrari entry level car. There's no average Joe Lamborghini entry level car. But then I started thinking, okay, but yes, this is not average Joe at all. But the GT3 RS does have a base model 911 under 100k. I don't think that's But a I super still car. think it Well, no, no, a base model 911 definitely not a supercar, but the GT3 RS is. Yeah. Um and just because it does have a a cheaper version at one point I thought okay that that disqualifies it. But then I started thinking more the GT3 RS does have a cheaper version, the Corvette does have a cheaper version and yeah, yeah. yet it's still so, undeniably uh, so a supercar. So for example, car. I think on 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 this you're going to find like where the 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 measure is. Mm -hmm. Where you look at a 911, a regular yeah. 911, which by the way is fast like a Ferrari kind of. Yeah, it's an awesome car. Really fast, drives really well. But it's not the crazy aspirational car that they sure. make for like the big boy like fuck you with the speed. So on that one, you have the regular 911. Yeah. You have a GT3. Would you? And, and this is where people are going to start going nuts. Yeah. Where are you putting in the GT3 as a supercar or is it a sports car? No, I think it's like. Or the, are you putting a GT3 RS? Where do you start? I think a GT3 is like the best sports car possible and the 3RS is the start of the supercar. I think that's. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. I would. I, I was going to say. It's arbitrary. I mean. I understand. But I think in this one, in the supercar thing, it's a little 
It's loosey goosey. Yeah. You can go with either or, and it's perfectly fine. I don't think anyone's going to pull out an eye from you if you say something stupid like, uh, oh, a Corvette is or a GT3 yeah. is. What about a GT4 RS? To me, that's a supercar. Yeah. And yeah. a GT4? No. That's yeah, a sports yeah. car. Yeah. I yeah. agree. But to me, the GT3 is a supercar. Okay. Because if you compare it to any Corvette, that's fuck, that shits on everything. Well, I mean, a, a new Z06 will beat it around the track and in a straight line. Yeah, but but then— It won't be we, as fun. But it won't be as fun. And, and it's, it's not little, as cool. Yeah, and then you also have, like, the Corvette sure. lower brow. Sure. You know what I mean? There's so a stereotype is, for sure. There is a They're middle ground— by their own brand, yeah. That we can say, all right, there's, there's some room to play with. Yeah. But when it comes to hypercars, I don't think there's room to play with. Yeah. I think a hypercar is something that breaks the standard of the fastest and creates a huge gap. I used to call them gap cars. Okay. The Veyron yeah. was the first hypercar that ever existed. No, the McLaren F1. McLaren F1, for sure. Was the first hypercar that ever existed because it broke a mega gap. It was super, it was so much easier back then because these, every hypercar set a new record. So the F1 had the top speed record. And the Veyron had the top speed record and the first production car yeah. over 1,000 horsepower and the first production car over a million dollars. Now there's so many that maybe don't set records but are very exclusive and very expensive. I just think people are confusing expensive and exclusive with hypercar. And yeah, I think brands I, are using I, and taking advantage I of that. I think it has, to be, it has to be expensive, exclusive, and extremely high performance. Because I, I think... A, I've seen a lot of people say two cars that I don't agree with that they say are hypercars. What? The Ford GT. No, it's not a hypercar. That's a, I barely don't think a it supercar. Is. A lot <laughs> of people say it's a hypercar. No. And just because it resells for over a million. No. And I mean, this is a car that I've driven a ton. My family had one, and I still don't agree that it's a, that it's a hypercar. If someone's going to be biased, it would be me. It's slow. It's 650 horsepower. Yeah. It's an awesome car. It no. was... 550 to 650 new. I don't think it's a hypercar. Yeah. Another one I hear a lot is the Revuelto. No. And I don't think so. No, 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 no. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. It was, e I think maybe one of them is, although the Ford GT isn't part of this, the difficulty of getting it. Like, I, it was very easy for me to get a Revuelto allocation. It uh, wouldn't be that hard. It would be a lot harder for me to get a, a, a different hypercar I, allocation. I understand. Uh, I don't think that has m much to do with it. And the reason why is the Revolt is not here breaking any records. It's not here changing the name of the game. It's not here setting up a brand new 0 to 60, 0 to 120. It's but not the, here I mean, the SF90 came out. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. It, it's not breaking any records yeah. in any way, shape, or form that are relevant to speed. Mm -hmm. And I think a hypercar just revolutionizes. This is what the P1, what the 918, and what the LaFerrari did. Yes. People don't remember. Like, these were huge gap cars. Yeah. So before you had the Veyron, and do you remember the Veyron versus an SLR, Veyron versus oh, Carrera yeah, GT? Oh, close. It, it was like, what on earth? So even when people call the Carrera GT, the Enzo, the MC12 hypercars, they're not. They're super fancy supercars, dude. The hypercar mm. of that era was the Veyron. I don't care, like, and, and mm. to me is, this is where I'm going to start and stand firm. I'm not moving on this one. Those old cars were not breaking anything compared to the Bugatti. The Bugatti was the hypercar of that time. These three were the, the top of the top of a supercar. Because I, I think the Enzo is a hypercar. And, and hang on, now thinking about this and going like the Curry GT and even the SLR, the amount of power that they had and how they like, remember how it was insane for everyone, how much they just kept pushing forward mm -hmm. as far as speed goes, like after yeah. 120 miles an hour, they just kept accelerating. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was nothing like that. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll take back my, and eat my own words and shove my own dick in my own pussy. Sorry. Hopefully That's you, crazy. You I didn't know you had that. both. <laughs> Hopefully you censor that in this <laughs> podcast. This is different. Uh, 
I might just not censor that. That's like, oh, come on. I might just like, it, normally he says some off color stuff and I just crop it out, but that one might need to stay. Oh, sorry. Damn it. <laughs> damn it. Okay. I think I'll take it back. I'll think I'll say now it's not that impressive, but back then when they came out, they, yeah, did, exactly. they were gap cars. Yeah. But the thing is, the Veyron was like, yes, the, a whole nother level. The of acceleration. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. But, but, they all work in different ways. The SLR was terrible. It was a terrible car as far as anything other than acceleration. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible suspension. If you had a convertible one, the, uh, the exhaust pipes were coming on the side and all of the heat would literally really? dive in. Oh my God, dude. Yeah, I had, I had that car. I'm talking from experience. I think I've only driven a coupe. Yeah. I'm talking from experience. I had it with the top down. I would be sitting at a light, and then you would feel all of the exhaust just making a Damn. like a, uh, a a hurricane of like heat inside yeah, yeah. of you. You're like, I'm getting dizzy. This is not Damn. good. So it was not the Courier GT was a whole different thing because he sure. was fast in corners. He was nervous. He was exciting the way it sounded, but he was also really fast. Like really, really fast. He felt like that power never stopped. So is that a hypercar in your eyes? Time. So this is what I'm saying. I think back then we labeled those as hypercars and they were hypercars, so they should stick as hypercars. Yes, yeah. Done. Now, moving forward, you had a uh, 918 P1 in LaFerrari. Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, the Bugatti had already established itself from the mm -hmm. start, from the Veyron. You don't have to include the Super Sport, yep. the, nothing. At that point, it was Obviously already hypercar. done. Yeah. These guys were incredibly fast. They were light years ahead of everybody else in technology. Mm -hmm. They were quicker from 0 to 60, 0 to 120. They would beat everyone on a quarter mile. They would beat everyone on the track. Mm -hmm. We tested it. We saw it. It was what it was. It's cars that really make a leap going forward, but are also really, really exclusive. Yeah. Like, really exclusive. Like, for example, let's say that Tesla comes out with a Roadster. With a Tesla Roadster. Yeah. I'm not... If he mass That's a supercar. He mass max. produces that and he yeah. beats everything. Still a supercar. Yeah. With hyper with hypercar performance. Yes. Which is what the SF90 is to me. And the 720S when it came out. Yeah. The 720S literally shat on everything. Absolutely. But it was a supercar yeah. with hypercar performance. 100%. And I'll give you a clear example right now. Pagani... A lot of people call her a hypercar. It's not. It's I a super. It it's a very expensive supercar. Okay. It's it's a hyper expensive supercar. Koenigsegg, they might be shedding a track. They might not have grip on a zero to, but they do have like some special stuff that makes them go from like one twenty to like eight hundred miles an hour as fast as possible, and then to break. That's a hypercar. Mm -hmm. It might not beat you on traffic, and it might not beat you on a racetrack, but that gives it, like, it's a gap car. I think it, that Pagani creates a new category of hypercar that's like an artistry hypercar. It's got a level of detail and is. craftsmanship that's so far beyond other supercars, despite it not being, I mean, it's slower than a Tesla Plaid, you know? But it's got this just X factor that to me feels like a hypercar to, to me. It doesn't feel like a hypercar to me. It feels like I bought a really, really nice and expensive museum piece. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have. And it's also a great car and he drives great and it sounds great. And he does like supercar stuff like at, at the peak, but he doesn't touch on anything performance wise that no one can touch. Sure. So when I'm talking about hypercar, you need to touch on performance. Mm -hmm. And as much as I love Horatio, love Pagani, and honestly, the aside from a LaFerrari, which I, I really need for some reason in my life, when I start getting crazy stuff and I don't want to have too much of it, I want to have a LaFerrari that I can store forever and just look at it and mm -hmm. maybe put it on the ceiling of the house, whatever. But I would go back and buy a Pagani. Why? Because it's a custom piece from mm -hmm. a really crazy meticulous designer that does all of this but not because of its performance i'm not thinking about that i can get the performance out of anything now electric you have a model like the tesla plaid 
When did you ever think that your daily car was going to be faster than any Never. super that car? Was, that was crazy. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So to me, Pagani, as much as I love them and I think their cars are great and they're uh, very sexy and like really take it to a whole different level. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> they take it to bless you. They take it to a whole Thank different you. level as far as design goes yeah. and all of that stuff. It's not a hypercar. A hypercar needs to bend the rules as far as times go. Okay, what about a McMurtry Spearling? The electric car with a fan on the bottom that does 0 to 60 in 1.4 seconds. Is my, that a hypercar? My, it's hyper speed. Yeah. But I, I think it's, a, it's an insanely fast supercar. Yes, but it's a supercar. Yeah. It's Whereas a, the opposite end of the spectrum is the Gordon Murray T50. I would say that's a hypercar with not as mind-bending speed i would actually call it just like a pagani a supercar that's i actually this is my problem with the t50 gordon murray is a fucking genius mm -hmm. a legend he's done all these things and he's very smart in what he built he built a car that we won yeah the ultimate enthusiast we car. want a cheaper McLaren F1 because our generation missed out on that. Like yeah. I can't, there's, I, I, I told you this before, even if I sell all of my companies at the peak of everything, I can't spend $20 million in a car. Yeah. That is insane. And then a year and you spend a million dollars with the upkeep of the F1, but Gordon Mary is making this like, what is it? $3 million. Yeah. I can buy something for like, let's say 10%, like loosey goosey, 10% uh -huh. of the price of the other one. You get the heritage, you get the middle seat, you get the V12 naturally aspirated with a fucking manual gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're giving me something that's worth so much more for uh -huh. way cheaper. Absolutely. Without the name, like, uh, it's basically, you know, when your parents used to tell you like, you don't need to eat McDonald's. We have McDonald's at home and they make you a shitty burger. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like what he's doing, but in the right, in, in not but a like in the best way. way possible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I that's a hypercar. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's okay. a hypercar. He's not breaking. Again, hypercar needs to break records. The RPM needs, that the engine spins is record breaking. But it needs and, to be a gap car, man. It needs to be driven and people need to see the different. Like, you need to shit on. Like, after. I made so many people buy 918s mm -hmm. because they would go out with me one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with our cars on a weekend, yeah, regular yeah, yeah. weekend. And we would put the cars side by side and we would just accelerate at the same time. And I would just shit on them to the level that they were so ashamed that they were like, I need to buy one of those because this yeah. is embarrassing. That's a hyper car in my view. But you could do that with, the yeah, yeah. please. I think it's the same thing. You need to break a gap. You need to create a different, you need to make. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you need to show me something completely out of this world at this point, dude. Because yeah, I agree that there should be something new yeah. about it. Like the new Bugatti. And we'll talk about that in a bit has a V 16, which isn't new. I mean, they, they had that back in the thirties, but, it, but it, 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 when have you seen a so V 16? Never. 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 Um, it used to be double. I mean, I think minimum, it's probably got to cost at least a million bucks. They've got to have yeah. definitely less than a thousand of them. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. these days, yeah. a day and age, I mean, well over a thousand horsepower. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't focus so much on the horsepower because if you can build me a car that's 800 kilos and yes, 800 horsepower. True. I'll go like, that's nice. Like, that's basically a Formula One car. Yeah. But, but like the BAC Mono that can beat a McLaren P1 GTR around the track. But that's not a hypercar. No, because it's it's a single-seater. It's an incredible track toy. It is a track yeah. toy. Yeah, no. I think a, a hypercar has to be a gap car in whatever the hell it's gapping other cars with. But you need to show me. And again, I say this with a lot of pain after everything that we talk about the Koenigsegg. The Koenigsegg is a hypercar. Yeah. It's not a mega car. It's a hyper car because it can accelerate like a motherfucker from whatever to whatever and then break and then yeah, just that in itself and the fact that he's making a very low volume and that it's expensive and it's very sexy too. That's a hyper car. And I think the 
X factor slash unexplainable is that like at Monterey Car Week, yeah. you take the 15-year-old kid who has photographed every car and is super jaded at car meets, lives in California. Yeah. That hypercar still is exciting. Yes. When you've seen every car, oh, yeah. no matter what, you're still like, oh my God, that car is passing right now. Yeah. You know, oh, you're yeah. not going to say that when a 458 passes. No. If you've seen a bunch <sighs> it, it, recently. But now, if a. Go ahead. What about the Venino? Hmm. That's not a hypercar, son. That's just mm. a supercar that's hyper expensive. Mm. No? Because he's hyper know. expensive. That's like, a, that's like a new, that's a unicorn. There's you know? like, yeah, there's only there's like, like nine of them. No, no. There's less than 20 altogether. Five or six coupes and more than that in roadsters. But it's like there, 15. if I saw one, I would, I would be like, holy shit. Yeah. 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 But that's like, I, I, I guess that's hyper impressive. <laughs> Rather it's than hyper impressive for sure. Lamborghini is a weird category because they've got these hyper cars that just the performance doesn't make any sense. None. You know, that's an Aventador that's so damn cool. It's scary. And the same with the Sesto Elemento where it's like it's a Gallardo. But if I saw that <laughs> thing driving, but I is, would yeah. literally like poop my pants Cause happily. Because like, Lamborghini knows how to make cool shit. Yeah. Like that's that's a big difference yeah. compared to everything else. Lamborghini knows how to make the Batmobile. Yeah, yeah. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. So I still I, think that's an unexplainable hypercar though, the the Veneno. I don't think it's a hypercar. I think it's just hyper expensive and hyper cool and hyper rare. Yeah. But when I, I think we gotta be almost religious to the point where we talk about hypercars. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because for you to earn that belt. Mm -hmm. No one's like you're not calling Motor Trend and like Fat Johnny Lieberman like, hey Johnny, <laughs> <laughs> can you stop eating tacos right now and just like get me this title right now that we're winning because we're a hypercar and come and analyze it? Like, it should come from the fact that it gaps mm -hmm. reality to the new reality. Mm -hmm. I think every single hypercar should gap a new reality and usher it for for cars, and I think. Yeah, one more time, going back into the past and saying the Courage GT, the SLR, and the uh, Enzo did that, along with the MC, uh, MC12, the P1, LaFerrari, the 918, Veyron. Because uh -huh. I don't think, for example, the Chiron is not, uh, it's a hypercar, but it's, just like a descendant from the Veyron where he didn't create anything new, but it's still crazy. Well, I mean, the Chiron Supersport went 305 miles an hour. So it was the first car. I'll, give, but I'll give it that. But that's like the crazy, like that's the craziest Chiron that you can get. Yeah. Performance wise, not like unique wise. You yeah. I mean, that was an evolution of the previous gen car. It it's wasn't the out of nowhere. Oh my God. Exactly. Yeah. It was expected. Exactly. And it needs to be rare. It mm -hmm. certainly needs to be rare, but it needs to gap. It needs to gap. So, for example, Tesla comes out with a, a Roadster, mm -hmm. a collaboration with SpaceX. My nerd ass is going to want to get it. Yeah. I'm going to pay for it, no doubt. Same. It might do 0 to 60 in one second. That's hyper performance. But if my guy Elon makes as many as people want. Which he will. And yeah. most likely. And they're cheap oh it's definitely not a hypercar it's not a hypercar yeah. but it is weird because it's likely that the roadster will be faster than the remock nevera that's why I, uh, to me it's but, hard but to... the remock is a hypercar right because it's two million dollars yeah that's it because it's two million this is a hard one this Oh, it's dumb. It's for sure dumb, but I, it's just... By the way, it's completely necessary. Yeah. But, but but the reality is everyone's always fighting about this through yeah. generations. Like, legitimately, I made this podcast seven years ago talking about it. Like, what's yeah. a hypercar and what's not? And the landscape has changed so much 100%. because of electric cars, too. Yeah, that has really changed. Because it used to be all about acceleration and performance as a big category. But electric cars have brought, you know... Dude, your roast, like, your regular Model S, 1.9. Yeah. But you see, this is where we fall. 
If but if my guy is making more than a thousand of those altogether, I can't put it on that label. He might have hyper speed, hyper coolness, and all, and by the way, I'll be there. I'll be the first one to get one. Hi, our friend there. I know who you are. I'm watching you. Please. Are you watching please, me too? Because I also please, please would like don't one. want to say your name. Yeah, but please yeah. come on. <clears throat> <laughs> I was kind of close. <laughs> I was kind of close to their name. <laughs> what do you mean? I was just uh, my throat. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I am very interested in that, but no, I. That's the hypercar that defeats the purpose the, of the hypercar. Yeah, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. No, no, this is the problem with new generations, Parker. You're younger than me by ten years. You're turning. You're turning thirty years old this year. Oh God. I'm turning 40 years old this year. This is old as fuck, Sergio. But your generation is fucked up in the head, dude. You think that's a hypercar? Any, Absolutely anyone not. Anyone can have a no, hypercar? No. No, son. Because I am going to no. buy that car. And Any to me, be. I am not on the same planet as somebody who can afford a hypercar. No, same so thing. It, it, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you there. So I think we found like a nice spot sure. so we can qualify. And I think we can all agree that there's going to be some cars that might and might not qualify and might be controversial in each category. And that's fine. It's just like, but as long as we follow the main rules of it, which is supercar, kind of like the uh, least fastest Ferrari that exists mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as speed. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a, a special car. It's got to cost a certain amount of money. And it's got to have a certain performance. That's a supercar. And it's got to be aspirational. And then on the hypercar thing, it just needs to be a gap car. It needs to be a gap car in a very, very expensive car. And it also needs to be very rare. Absolutely. I think along those lines, we can create a proper definition yeah, yeah. and play with those. So. Yeah. Speaking of hypercars, have you seen much about the new Bugatti Chiron successor? No, you you were telling me about it. I want to know more. I saw that Mate posted uh, Mate that was Rima. So funny. Now the CEO of Bugatti he goes, yeah. "Oh, you guys want to see the new uh, Bugatti? This is only for customers." I'm like, "Dude, just show it to all of us poor people." No, At this it, point, it was it was like it was like a 15 year old kid doing it. He's walking down the hallway of something opens up the door like he's going to reveal this thing and then he's like nope not for you you can't afford it you and not a, not even in a it, not even in a pretentious in a way, way like that no, like no, no. It, it was genuinely hilarious yeah and uber rich people who are clients of of Remock and Bugatti have seen it yeah. um, I'm jealous of that but what we do know for sure is that it's a hybrid and it's for sure a V16 have you heard what it sounds like no it sounds insane so it, would you say it sounds more sporty than the ones right now? It sounds way more sporty than a Chiron, yeah. Really? Yeah. Because Matt, even though he makes electric cars, uh -huh. which a lot of people just give him credit for that and think, oh, this guy is just obsessed with electric cars. Matt is obsessed with cars as a general. Yeah, of course. He loves yeah. what a supercar is. Yeah. He loves exhaust notes. Yeah, he loves he BMWs. Loves uh, yeah. Rarity, all that stuff. He's like a legit car guy mm -hmm. built up. From the bottom all the way to the to the top, it's crazy. So I don't think he's gonna let us down with something like a bland product. Yeah, I think he's very edgy in whatever he makes. We've seen it when he used to compete with that uh, BMW in the drag races in Croatia uh -huh. with everyone, and it was electric. It wasn't just because uh, he wanted to make an electric car. It was just because that is the fastest way to get to the finish line. So he does whatever he needs to be done to win. So uh, the, the, the spirit of Mate Rima going into Bugatti, I think it's going to give it more life. As to it was kind of in an autopilot from the Veyron to the Chiron, and mm -hmm. he was very just like, oh, it's just an upgrade. I think now we're going to get something special. Yeah, well, I think this is going to cement him. Uh, he already is, but as a freaking legend, because uh, there were a lot of rumors that the next-gen Chiron would be all electric. And, and at that point, they tried, by the what's way. really the difference between that and a Remock Nevera? It's just yeah. a different, you know, a different brand and a different shell, whatnot. But to go from a already ridiculous engine, a W16 with four turbos, to they don't know if they, 
they haven't publicly said it, but the rumors and it probably leaking information that's likely correct from people who have seen it is that it's a Cosworth V16 8.3 liters naturally aspirated that revs to 9,000 RPM. So it's like two and a half GT3 RSs just screaming. And you can go on YouTube and play. Bugatti posted it on their YouTube channel, the soundtrack. And it sounds gnarly. Like it sounds really good. What? And to go from an all electric kind of like maybe more boring soulless car to a, you've never seen an engine like this in your life. And it sounds insane is, is awesome. Well, if anyone's able to do something like that, he's that yeah. dude, right? Like yeah. who, who else can do shit like that? Yeah. And also I want to remind you, do you remember that at some point Bugatti was going to come out with an SUV fully electric? Uh -huh. Okay. That was a uh, sedan uh, SUV as well. No, it was going to be an SUV. Sergio and I went to, uh, uh, let's say, Europe, and we met with people close to that, mm -hmm. to the whole Bugatti thing, and they were really building In those. Molsheim, France. They <laughs> wanted <laughs> they wanted to build it for like $800,000, $900,000. It's what oh. it was, and they were going to do a full Bugatti SUV thing, and it was going to wow. be a thing. Yeah. Then, oh, yeah. Oh, they no, would have no, ruined no. their brand. Big time. That. Cause I would have sold everything and gotten one of those. And if I can have a Bugatti, like the brand's done. <laughs> <laughs> like that's actually the determining factor. <laughs> Vehicle virgins gets a Bugatti, just close up shop. You never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. Maybe you're going to be one of the best clients very soon. You never know. I hope so. Man. You never know. And so we know that that was going on. We know that they also had like little faith in electrics and that they were like flip flopping towards like, are we going to do this biofuel thing and not? And by the way, the biofuel thing has been like kind of dead. They're not going into it. They're going into full electric. That seems to be the, the runoff at the end. And he focused, uh, uh, uh Mate, when we're talking about just Mate Rimac on the car. He focused so much on innovating in uh -huh. so many different ways that whenever we count just electric cars, it seems boring. But dude, that Remac Nevera, what beats it? Nothing. Nothing really. So then yeah. you go on the other side with the Bugatti and people want to feel like I'm paying for something else. That's why they left the engine in. Because at first they real at first when they were going fully electric, they thought people would be willing to spend that much money in a fully electric car. But for example, look at the Lotus Avaya. Do you remember yeah, that car? Yeah, what's happening with that thing? What happened with that car? I don't know. And the thing is, that's a two and a half million dollar car. It looked insane. It's incredible looking. Like to me, it's one of yeah, probably one of the best cars top in a three long time. best all time. Everything. I love it. And I said, "Am I going to spend two and a half million dollars just on? It looks cool, but I yeah, absolutely feel like not. No." And the answer for Bugatti was kind of like the same. So they went on in a different direction. And, and, and my question was always, what is Mate going to do uh -huh. to be able to like give people something that they desire so bad, but at the same time, not lose the heritage sure. of what a Bugatti is. And I feel like whatever the answer is, what you're telling me sounds absolutely right in line with what like this crazy man would do. He's a madman and a genius. Uh, something that sounds incredible, that has yeah. a lot of power, and that's it, very comfortable. Apparently three electric motors. So in the 1800 to 2000 horsepower range. God damn. So that's going to be another hypercar right there. Yeah, I mean, if Bugatti came out with a supercar, that'd be pretty whack. Can you? Yeah, like, yeah our replacement to the Chiron is a is a three hundred thousand dollar. You have the Chiron it, again. We named it a hypercar just by descent, like descending from the Veyron. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna name this new Bugatti uh, a hypercar just because it's descending from the Chiron. I think we're gonna name it a hypercar because it's gonna earn it in its own. Yeah, way. yeah. In this case, from what I've been told, it looks like nothing else radically different and the powertrain is radically different yeah so which i think is really exciting which is awesome that someone yeah. so big as bugatti is taking a chance at doing something completely new yeah because everybody's everybody's a little afraid i wonder if it's a like a big middle finger to the other brands because they've effectively taken the most complex thing they could possibly do and they're going to put it into action you know they've got a new motor out of nowhere that revs to a ridiculous rpm 
and added an electric powertrain. It's like, oh, oh, you, you had the Valkyrie and the AMG one that you've spent forever on. You couldn't figure out. Well, here's how, here's how it's done. Well, I think when you give someone that's so smart and so, um, someone who thinks so much outside of the box, yeah. like Mate, an insane amount of money to create something. Because remember, he he made that first BMW and that even that first concept one, dude, that we saw in Pebble that time mm -hmm. that we went together. Uh, he did that with a limited budget. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Mate unleashed like, hey, dude, go make some crazy shit. Yeah. The stuff that he can do. And, and to me, that's more, that's more him. Even though the, the, the Remak, the Nevera, is an incredibly fast car and does all this crazy stuff, I think we're going to see Mate, like the spirit of what he can build and the dude, like straight up his soul in this car. I Not agree. Not so much on the other one. Because now he's got full range, the respect, the time in the company, the experience and also the resources to build something absolutely fucking bananas. And dude. it's the, that is the right thing to do. I mean, this is all speculation because I'm not in the company, but it appears they gave him some serious free reign on what to do. You know, they could have been more of the, as you were talking off camera, the Porsche route where it's an iterative process and it gets a little better every time. And they're like, no, Mate, yes, you've taken over, but this is Bugatti. We're, we're going to do the W16. We're going to do the four turbos. It's just going to get a little better. But they just, I mean, I actually think they this, just made a whole new car. I actually think this has been a fight within the I, system. I, I'm sure. I think so. I'm sure. Just because he's so out there and yeah. he wants to like legitimately do crazy stuff. Yeah. And an established company doesn't want it. Like, mm -hmm. And again, this is just guessing. Uh, an established company doesn't want to do and take the role of like, let's innovate to the yeah. high heavens and yeah. like put it all at like, put it all on 27. Yeah. Like you don't want to do that. You don't want to put all of your eggs in that one number. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Matt is completely different. He's like a risk taker. He's done it before. Uh, he's an innovator. He's someone that elevates the game. And to me is he probably had like these conversations with him. Like, dude, we want to do something special. This is what we need to do. Yeah. And I can't imagine because again, we went from a Bugatti that was like, let's go fully electric to a Bugatti that went, no, 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 no. We still got like yeah. an engine to put in this car. And especially now that they're going instead W16, V16 with these high revving engines that sound like a mofo. I think it's, he's going to do something really special. And I, I don't think it, it, it was as easy as we all think for him. Oh, I'm sure it was crazy. Yeah. I, I think so. And I think a lot of it, a lot of the credit and a lot more than he should take should be on his back because when you're fighting the establishment of a big company, and again, I, this is just me guessing. Yeah. When you're fighting a company that's so established, so big, and, and so important around the world, like VW as a whole, you better come prepared. Yeah. And I think if anyone was prepared from day one, is that dude. 100%. And I cannot wait to see what he does. Yeah, same. I can't. I can't. I, I'm sure he's going to blow our minds and... Yeah. Yeah. 100%. That's, and to me, that's the one. If I'm going to spend a few million dollars on a Mate product, I'll do that. Yeah. Because then, all due respect, and I said this before... Uh, uh, Nevera is great, but I feel like I can get that on the Tesla for 10 times less. Yeah. Not on the Bugatti. A Bugatti's a Bugatti. I think this is, yeah, this is the one. This is the one. 100%. Yeah. Speaking about the one, how did you get this? And like, <laughs> I mean, that's insane. Uh, so I, I, I order, obviously, this is a car that I used to have in yeah. real life. And when I bought the car, I'm not going to say exactly what it was, but there was an error mm -hmm. in the car. Uh, something was messed up in the order. And I called, I called, uh, I, I called Francesco back at the plant and I was like, Hey, Francesco, what's going on with my Pagani? Like I ordered this one thing. I'm not talking about the model. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about the big car that I spent $2 million on. I'm like, I ordered this car. I, I was there with you and we said that it was going to go ABC mm -hmm. And you didn't include this. And it was a major part of it that was a big error. Uh -huh. 
And he goes, oh man, let me see what I can do. So after a few days, they call me back and they're like, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fix your problem. We're going to make you whole with the thing that we fucked up. Mm -hmm. But we also want to give you a little surprise. I was like, all right, what is it? And they go, we're going to send you a full replica of your car with the leather and the carbon fiber and everything. I was like, oh, that's cool. Whatever. I thought they were going to send me like a yeah, hot yeah. wheel. Like no, a small one. No, this is one. legitimately insane. Dude, they sent me this. I was like, holy crap. And afterwards, I looked it up. It was like $12,000, which thank you so much, Pagani. And Sergio yeah, right wild. now, before we started, was saying because of inflation and that there's not a lot of them. This is now worth like twenty thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's... see, I it is, had like yeah. seventeen bucks in my wallet. I was trying to buy it from him, and he he was not. Down. It's not gonna go down. Yeah. And now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I ripped it off and said, "Oh, sorry." It's the only thing that's missing. It's the only thing that's missing. It's Do you got, know where it is? It's got perfect Carfax. No, 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 no I can't remember. <laughs> and the the one thing I'll say is when Sergio comes out and says like, "Oh yeah, it's like twenty five grand." I'm thinking, damn, I can buy a new Tesla just by getting rid of this. Yeah, that's insane. That is crazy. So whenever you guys see my new Tesla, just know where it came from. Not yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a hard one because it's both a incredible piece of your life and history and, and it's insane craftsmanship. But when you put it into terms of a freaking car, like a brand new car. <laughs> that That's when he gets crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I to me, is it's worth keeping. You know what? Thank God I don't need the money to yeah, yeah. buy anything. Because so this I'm... makes no sense in the world. <laughs> no, 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 no. In no, terms no. of the money. None. So it's just a nice little like big boy toy yeah. that you're able to have. And uh, also we were talking about the, the lamp that we've had yeah. this before that has the Zonda and the wire parts. And especially looking at how parts have gone up in price mm -hmm. with uh, with inflation. I was <laughs> I was saying that that fucking lamp is probably worth a hundred thousand dollars right now because there's not enough parts for anything yeah i mean somebody's <laughs> comes in they go i want to uh, turn my zonda f into a 760 they're doing those conversions and they go oh shoot we're out of parts oh alejandro yeah we need <laughs> we need this we need the zonda dash your lamp. yeah and then they'll, they'll buy it for like 80 grand yeah they're gonna buy all the lamps back yeah no i think uh, i have a lot of uh i don't i don't care so much about the price i think um I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I have a lot of friends in crazy spaces, in different things, or I've been a customer of them or whatever it is, that relationship where you get to keep, you get to get something so special mm -hmm. and a once in a lifetime thing that at least you have it. And I'm not a yeah. very material, like, for example, if they walked in tomorrow and they stole all of my shit, like, I'm not going to cry for days. It'll be sad, like one day, two days, three days, whatever. But I'm not married to material possessions. But if I can have them just to remind me of like those moments and whatnot, mm -hmm. I'll take it, dude. Like, it, I think this is exactly that. It reminded me of like those awesome years when I started. More than anything, to me, what this reminds me of is when I started on YouTube, when no one wanted to post like their fancy cars. Yeah, 100%. No one was willing to show like the crazy lifestyle or anything. And I was like, you know what? If I one day make it, I want to make sure that I can share it with the people. It reminds me of like that feeling and it, it's a happy feeling. Yeah. Wow. That's oh, so wonderful. it does. Speaking of happy feelings, uh, I don't know how that's related <laughs> at all. Actually, um, <laughs> you went to IndyCar. What, what's that like compared to Formula One? I've, um, I have Maybe I've been to an IndyCar race, actually, but but not in, we in need a to decade. Go to, first of all, we need to go together. The yeah. racing in Indy, Long Beach. Dude, we, yeah. Uh, uh, didn't you go? Oh, to, I've been to Long Beach Grand Prix. What am I thinking? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were even in Long Beach the last time I was there, like two, no, three years ago, probably, when we, we came from Texas the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... I go to IndyCar for everyone that's listening, just that, uh, you know, I haven't said it enough times. A friend of mine races in IndyCar for McLaren, for Arrow, and he, his name is Pato Oward, Mexican dude, great driver. He's the number one there. There's three cars that they have, and he's the one that, aside from Amazon, because I was, 
we were doing a pilot for Amazon and they were like, you need to learn about Formula One. So I got into racing because Amazon was like, this is going to be part of your life. I was like, no problem, sir. You're paying the big bucks, so I'll do it. And then I met this dude, Pato, who made me fall in love with the sport and whatnot. I think for, uh, and I go to a lot of IndyCar and I go to a lot of uh, uh, Formula One a year. Mm -hmm. I think IndyCar has way better racing than Formula One. Huh. Racing wheel to wheel, holy sh and those cars can take punishment, dude. Yeah, there are so many clips race to, like wheel to wheel racing, cars hitting each other, going like side by side, breaking on top of each other, hitting each other after the turn, like off balancing the car on the back or on the front, depending on where you hit it, and going through the turn, and then the other turn you see the other car coming back at it. Racing in IndyCar is way more exciting than in Formula One. The product of the race is great. Formula One is like the NFL uh -huh. compared to college football. Uh -huh. College football is exciting to a lot of people sure. because it's not everything comparison. is perfect. Yeah. Because anyone yeah, anything can, can win. Anything yeah. can happen. Anyone can do a fumble. Anyone can do a drop kick. A anyone can do anything that's completely unexpected. Sure. Whereas in the NFL, it's more of a... You know what the score probabilities are going to be yeah, like. Yeah. They're going to play like this. It's a, it's a matchup in this way. It's played to perfection. Uh -huh. Formula One is played to perfection. My my problem with IndyCar right now, I guess there's problems with Formula One and problems with IndyCar. Problems with Formula One is there's one team that dominates for like a decade. Yeah. And then there comes another one dominates for a decade. And then there comes another one, and it's very predictable, and it's the same, and there's not, not a lot of passes, which is why they changed the rules in Formula One. In the car, you never know who the fuck is going to win. It's like a big surprise, and it's a good surprise. It's entertaining. It's fun. You're watching uh, the whole race. You're on the edge of your seats. Pit stops. It's not the same control crew with all of those people. It's more of a, let's see what happens. Bless you. Ooh. So it's crazy, 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 not as contained as Formula One. Formula yeah. One is the NFL, IndyCar is college. And there's, first of all, I love going to IndyCar uh, uh, stuff because of the access that I get. Yeah, so that's yeah. just a personal bias on a personal, of I'm sure if Pato makes it to Formula One and we're like McLaren Formula One, We'll have the same type of access and uh -huh. we'll be doing that in formula one then that's a whole different league right yeah. uh also formula one pays me for some stuff indycar doesn't pay me for some stuff like at all i go to indycar because of pato and i love it and whatnot but when we really get to the sport differences indycar dude roger penske is the guy who owns the series he's an older dude he's got a team he's a little out of touch with the world he just wants to keep what works for the uh, uh, series. And this is my personal critique, obviously. This is not reflected on any reality whatsoever other than mine. Uh, he doesn't want to change anything. He knows his customer is middle America that doesn't travel anywhere, that doesn't want to learn anything, that likes, ag that likes aggressive drivers, and that's it. But that comes with a lot of problems. There is Formula One, 10 teams. Out of the 10 teams, each team has two cars. Mm -hmm. The teams have the same livery, which is the wraps on the car mm -hmm. at all times looking the same. Or you might be doing a historical variety on them, but you know who they are yeah. because you know what an older Ferrari looks like. Yeah. Whereas IndyCar is like, even though there's teams like the Andretti team, the Penske team, the Arrow team, all of these different Juncos or any of these teams... Every fucking weekend, it's a different light livery. Every weekend? It, it's it, it, maybe not every weekend, but every two weeks or every wow. whenever they feel like wow. it. Wow. And it's like, I follow Alex Palou, who's, so the Alex, who's the champion right now. Okay. Fucking great kid from Spain. Mm -hmm. Awesome, uh, humble kid, makes a lot of money, but he wins a lot. Mm -hmm. Like a lot. And Alex drives the DHL car right now. Okay. What are the DHL colors? Yellow and red. Yep. Right? With some white. That's what they wear. Last two fucking races, he's been in a green car. 
Yeah, that's extremely weird. That doesn't even and, make sense for DHL. And it's like, dude, it's yeah. so hard to follow the sport without these teams being like fixed teams. Sure. Because even though you call them Penske, even though you call them Andretti, even though you call them this, when I see them on the track, they're like within teams, they're all so different. The only cars that kind of look the same is Arrow from McLaren. Th those are the only ones. Everybody else just has a like uh, willpower. Oh, the Verizon car. And it's just the Verizon car, dude. And then you have uh, what's uh, Joseph Newgarden who drives the Humvee, blah, 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 I think. I can't even remember the name of his sponsors. And then you have, like, the, the Ray Hull Lan Lanigan Letterman that sounds like a law firm team. It's just, like, wide blue red cars. Uh -huh. Like, there's no consistency. And then you get into the broadcasting part of it, dude. Formula I've never watched IndyCar uh, on TV or on the internet. Formula One is exquisite. Yeah. You they got start the too. from the beginning to the end. You watch the race. There's nothing more. The people talking, Crofty, uh, uh, Ted, all, all, all of these guys mm -hmm. are incredible. And they're fun. And, you know, they, they're fun within the limits and yeah. whatever they do. But in IndyCar, dude, everything is a sponsorship. Everything. Really? Oh, it's like, oh, you got the Bridgestone. Is it the Firestones? It's the Firestones, right? So the tires are the Firestones. So in, in Formula One, you're talking about a car going around the track. And it's like, oh, the tire degradation is really bad and, yeah, and yeah. this and that. This is IndyCar. Ah, oh, the Firestone degradation is not bad. It's just good Firestone material to have on your car. Because Firestone is like, dude, shut the fuck That's up. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, yeah, it's like I will fucking murder my dick and <laughs> slam my balls into like I, I don't understand why you need to be like that. And then they throw commercials. You're watching racing in IndyCar and then there's like, all right, Pato Oward's about to overtake Colton Herta. Boom, cut to commercial. And then you go into straight up commercials. That's insane. They, 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 really? No, no, no. They don't. You just show up. It's like, oh, by the way, for everyone that showed up, now this guy's in number one. No. Awesome. Yeah. No. Then everything in IndyCar is very America, which is like, oh, commercials, money first. Uh -huh. So there might be, like, there's Graham Rahal. Yeah. Who's probably was good at some point. I, 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 I never watched it when he was good. But he was probably good at some point. Graham Rahal, he has like a, a car dealership and whatnot. Yeah, so he races? He does. Oh, His I dad, he's a race car le legend, dude. Oh, gotcha. Racing car legend. And now he's in it. And he's like fucking dead last in most of this shit. Like probably not dead last, but he's like on the backpack. Let's just call it that. Uh -huh. And they put his fucking car on TV like a billion times during a race. I wonder if Be they pay for that. Sponsorships. Yeah sponsorships like why am i watching graham rahal overtake his shadow when there's all this action like in yeah, the yeah. top you, 10 you gotta dude. show like, the most exciting end what is going and, and again i just say this as i i need to put some like real examples yeah. in this because otherwise it's hard to 100%. follow that so there's like so many things where indycar dude you need to go also indycar used to race internationally and now they only race within the united states and that's how fucking if we brought IndyCar to Mexico uh -huh. to the uh, where we run F1, we would make a, a fortune and they just don't want to do it. Huh. If we went to Canada, which I think they go to Canada now for one race, but like to the big places, we would make a killing. If we went to Argentina, if we went to Europe, we would make a killing. But Roger Penske just wants to keep it all for like the same American family that's been watching it at all times. Mm. And it's disappointing. And again, it's a really fun sport to watch. It's like college football, dude, at that level. It's just like all over the place. Yeah, it's a good and it's just too sponsor and too like, too money driven. Formula One too. But the problem is when, and, and this is something I told, uh, I told someone, this is what I'm gonna say. The reason why, IndyCar or Formula One shits on IndyCar is this. I was watching the Formula One Grand Prix in Monaco mm -hmm. where they had Bad Bunny they had on the track along with Brad Pitt. Bad Bunny had been shooting a Formula uh, a music video for yeah. his song Monaco with a F40 
on the yacht and all this crazy shit. And in IndyCar, they had the Detroit Grand Prix and their guest of honor was Flavor Flav. Is there a better way of putting this shit or oh, what? That's pretty good. <laughs> I think we gotta end on that. That's crazy. Oh my, Jesus Christ, dude. Wow. Come on. Why is this not working out? That's why. Uh, maybe because of this? Jeez, and Formula Louise. One does pay those like mega celebrities to go. Yeah, I believe it. IndyCar can pay them too. They just yeah. don't. Uh, I don't know. I feel like IndyCar could be the American Formula One, but we just. Yeah. Well, sounds like there's a lot of room for potential. It, there is. Room I wish growth. I had money to buy it off of Penske because I could. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't have anything close to. So, Roger, I love you. Great job. <laughs> I got to go to a race one of these times, though. <laughs> no, we're going to go to Long Beach. It's happening yeah, in a yeah. few weeks. Oh, it's a few uh, weeks from now? You. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's We let's have a suite. It. Ooh. Yeah, it's well, going to be never nice. gone to one of it's those. It's going to be nice. It's going nice. to be nice. Some drinks, some mezcal. Some good water. Sweet. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. We'll do it. All right. It's two dudes, one car. That's it? Let's go eat. I don't know. Let's he just go. gave the signal. We got we got Sergio doing signals now. We, we uh, No, I want him to. I'm glad you are. That's good. We didn't yeah. know how long our podcasts were before. We just kind of like. Just go. Just go with it. And and now we've got. Uh, now we got the brake yeah, signal. Yeah, now we got the, the human signal. So this was two dudes, one car. Remember, guys. You can watch it on uh, uh, you can watch it on YouTube, uh, but if you want to hear and listen to this, you can go on Spotify, Google Cast, Apple iTunes, uh, Apple Podcast, or any other podcast platform. You'll find us two dudes one car. Leave a review. Don't be a yeah. dick. And thank you for those in Italy because apparently we're we're like a top comedy channel in Italy. In, in many, and I don't understand. In many weird countries, yeah. we are, which I appreciate. Yeah, I love you, awesome. my weird countries. <laughs> I wouldn't qualify Italy as a weird country. But. No, no, no. But like weird for us to be number one like, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the top ten. Well, considering we are speaking zero Italian. <laughs> yeah. It, you know what? That's Horatio. Yeah. Getting all the bandwidth. Thank you. Saludos, Horatio. All right. Ciao. <laughs>